Overlord's, hey, Overlord's true end. Before you're taken back to reset the story once again, you pause for a moment. True. <laughs> Howdy y'all and welcome back to GT Not Live where today we're continuing our journeys through the powerful stories of Bad End Theater. As you can see I'm wearing my Sunday finest hat like I was last time because I'm just a maiden trying to explore my place in this world. Apparently also I'm from the south but a vague unspecified part of the south because I don't have a good accent. And how are you today Ash? I'm pretty good. <laughs> I tried, so I, I tried to replicate the hat that I created last time for this. It is, I, for some reason, last time we just struck magic, and yeah. this time I cannot for the life of me get this to work again. I don't know what my problem is. There it's, was it's not great. Definitely some like loopage in the front. Well, yeah, no, the 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 belt needed to loop in the front for sure. Oh jeez. I feel this <laughs> is See, no, but now my now my paper towel is bunching. Do you need me to hold it in place? No, for you? no, it's fine. This is it. This, <laughs> just the play. this is the Met Gala version. It is. It's, it's the asymmetric look. So they 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 heard my last time last time I petitioned the Met Gala to let me in uh, using my recycled attire, and I got a letter back being like, "Hey, we like your outfit, but can you make it more artfully done?" And so this is it. It's the asymmetric look that now. It's so artfully done. Right? Decisions oh. were made. Decisions were made. They ne weren't necessarily good decisions, but at least they were made. Speaking of making decisions, we're going to be making a lot of decisions here in Bad End Theater, but the decision that I want to start things off with today is Ash's decision to go to theater school. <laughs> that because, was a choice. Because last, it was a choice. Apparently it was a very... Uh, Bold choice, strong choice. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily strong and like, this was a good decision sort of way. But last time you cliffhangered us. Is that a verb, cliffhangered? Sure. Left us on a cliffhanger? I sure. don't know. Left us on a cliffhanger is too, too wordy. There should be a shorter way of saying it. Cliffhangered. You cliffhangered us. Yep. With, with hints of a theatrical. Any good other theatrical stories coming from your neck of the woods? Mm, let's see. Without, without triggering you too deeply. Cause well, I, cause I, we do have to play a game eventually here, but you yeah, know, yeah. But we can do like a a short mini therapy session. Oh yeah. So um, I had to sing a modest mouse song completely a cappella. You had to. Yeah. Or was this just a choice? No, I didn't have a choice. He made me. <laughs> Your theater teacher? Yes. What? A modest mouse song. Yes. Why? Well. So it, it, it cuz like to me when you say stuff like that I'm like oh and that's why I asked like it, whether he made you cuz like to me you know I had like a fallout boy song in my <laughs> audition repertoire because a lot of theater requires you to have like you know pop song show off your range song you know like you have to have a pretty deep roster of songs to choose like classical musical theater modern musical theater belt song patter song whatever so you have a pretty deep roster of songs that you can just like you have to be able to whip out and so one of my go-to like pop or kind of like more edgy like spring awakening -y, you know like dear evan hansen-esque i was like oh here's a fallout boy song you know, that's kind of flat toned and, you know, shows off range and stuff. So, but no, this was just a requirement for your theater department, huh? Yeah. So we were doing this show um, and I really liked the script. It's called Cherrywood. Okay. Um, and it's just Not lines. to be confused with Cherry Orchard. Exactly. It's it's the wood. It's the, <laughs> it's the sequel to che Chekhov's Cherry Orchard where they have hewn down the trees and now it's just cherry wood. Yeah. Okay. So... It's all, it's all down now. Okay. It's like 2004. Okay. Um, it, it, there's no characters in this script. It's all lines. So it's completely devised in which you create like characters throughout. Okay, so, so okay. Like, and that part's pretty cool. Man, your theater program was very adamant about not doing traditional shows. Yeah, no. Hey, we're going to do this show that, that is anti-play. Hey, we're going to do this show that isn't really a show. It's just a bunch of collections of lines 
arbitrarily <laughs> distributed to a mass of humanity. No, my theater school was like, I'm not like other girls. <laughs> Oh, I, I will say, it, and it's it's funny that theater schools tend to do, like, it, you, it really depends on where you go. Because a lot of theater schools, like, want to active, they, they want to choose, like, the artsiest. Maybe this is the same thing, like, why I give Matt a hard time back in the day when he was like, ah, oh, I, I don't watch mainstream. Do the mainstream stuff! That's the stuff that's going to make you successful in a financially based career. Maybe, I don't know, like, sure, study some of this stuff and maybe do it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? In the professional theater world, especially, you know, no one's auditioning you for the inspector general based entirely on, you know, gesture work from like, you know, director X, but rather maybe they're going to do like the umpteenth production of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream code. Yeah. I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> My my, see, I'm I'm feeling this. See, this is Thank a mutual. You. This is a Thank mutual cathartic. Because theater departments do this. Like even Duke's theater department. Like we, you know, it was like the the shows that they would pick were so weird and arbitrary. And you're like, why? You know, like um, and it's it's fine. It's it's fine. Like good. That is the beauty of theater. Do these esoteric things that are off the wall and strange. But you also got to teach people the stuff that they need in order to be successful in that career path. It, yeah, and I think that's where my in my my department was focused so much on taking risks yeah. and doing risky theater, yeah. which I think it is important. Oh, 100 percent. That's but the, like again, that's the beauty of theater. When you don't mix that up with like mainstream and like basic foundational skills, <laughs> yeah. then you just have like kids who are like, my entire life is link later. You know what I mean? <laughs> my my entire theater training is I am commenting on the couch right now. <laughs> Viewpoints. I am commenting on the shape of the couch View right points. now. Viewpoints. This is a couch. Do you not see my couch? This is a couch. <laughs> Do you not see the shape of the couch? Now I'm contrasting the shape of the couch. Oh wow, the the topography <laughs> that you're bringing. <laughs> right. I'm I'm commenting on it. And now my leg is commenting on the couch. This is a kinesthetic response. This is it. This is it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now I'm feeling my emotions. And now my gestures. I might not be feeling things, but my gestures are telling you that I am angry right now and a little bit nervous and a little bit scared. <laughs> to this day, I mean, my first, what was it? My first theater department production at Duke was, was exactly, it was the Inspector General, which was like a retranslated version of like, I think it was an old Russian play or something like that about like- Oh, the that's always fun. Yeah, was right. Cause- It's a great start. Oh well, yeah, I mean, that's a start. And then the first, the the mission of it was learn watch watch Doctor Strange Love <laughs> and take away twenty five gestures from that movie to work oh. into your character and then throughout the play no. at just random time like uh, you know no. gesture work is fine like you know learning different things to do with your hands and incorporating them into a character so that way you know it makes them feel more believable and, and you're not just, you're not just like killing. Yes. Yeah, you're not just gesticulating with your hands a lot. Like I get it. That makes sense. But the, <laughs> but see that last point of working it naturally into the, th into your gesture, into like the character was the missing piece there that was never communicated. Yeah. Instead it was okay. At random times throughout the play, go through your gesture portfolio, you know? And so, and, and it's like random stuff. And it's like, there's a, there's a degree that you can do, these sorts of gestures, but it was so hyper realistic. That's like no one got it. Everyone walked out of that show like super confused. They're like, what the heck is going on? What yeah. is this? And like, that's another thing, especially when you're like 17 and this is something that like you want to pursue yeah. possibly. And like, you just have people like walking out being like, that was weird. Yeah. Like, you know, it's important to make stuff that you can be proud of when you're young and right. like you're that impressionable. Yeah. But no, my theater teacher was like, okay, there's a part where you have to sing a Modest Mouse song like a love song and you're going to do it yeah. because I can tell that you're scared. Oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. So there were five other people who wanted to audition to do that part. Yeah. But he picked me because I looked scared. That's nuts. I will say, uh, speaking of doing like uh, songs in weird things for weird things in theater, uh, there was this show that I don't know. I was kind of doing it as a joke or kind of like to me, like 
I auditioned for it because I'm like, I don't think I have a chance at getting anything in this, but I, I'm going to audition anyway because I always went to basically every audition just to, you know, practice auditions, do different things or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just, our, I, I, and I think part of me suspected that the, the director of this one would appreciate it. This was a student-led production. This wasn't the theater department. The theater department would have, like, crucified me. Um, <laughs> but you had to go in with a monologue, right? even though no one actually cares about the monologue. Like, no one ever cares about the monologues. Anyway, it, like, it's such an arbitrary part of the process. No one cares. You sing your, th sing your, not, in professional theater, you're lucky if you get eight bars. of. They're just like, what's your highest note? And you go, ah, and they're like, okay, thank you, next. Like, that's, huh, that's, that's round so one of the audition. That's so interesting. Oh, yeah, in, in theater, in New York especially. Pff, I guess what, they gotta go through a lot of people. What's your high note? Okay, there it is, bye. We'll call you, maybe. Um, but... But yeah, in, in, for this show, I'm like, well, I don't want to learn another monologue for this or whatever. So I'm like, so I recited the lyrics to Bet On It from High School Musical <gasps> 2. Oh, no way. As the monologue. And it actually got me to the next round. Like, they thought it was hilarious. No and it got way. me to the next round of auditions and stuff. Yeah, it was good. Oh, I adore and you. Do, That's doing, incredible. Doing it as a dramatic monologue was a win. I mean, because it's like... Everybody's always talking at me. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get in my head. I gotta listen to my own heart talking. I gotta trust in myself instead. Did you ever lose yourself to get what you want? D did you ever get on a ride and, and just wanna get off? Et cetera, et cetera. Bet on it. Bet on it. Bet on it. Mm. Bet on me. Yes! <laughs> Give him the part! There it is. <laughs> we found our lead. I actually, I, I might have gotten it. Uh, I was just too short. So that, that was actually it. I made it to the final two for the lead of the I'm like, it, it would have been a cool role. It would have been awesome. Uh, it's actually beautiful, but theater sucks. Yeah, no, it was, and, and it was ultimately, I ended up being too short for the person they wanted for the other two, the two other people. Because it was God. a three person uh, show. Uh, it was actually one of my favorite shows, A Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, and I, I auditioned for it because oh, I'm like, because no. I love the show, but no. it's also one where I didn't, I'm like, I I know kind of this director, I know like kind of the, the crew and so I, I don't think I have a chance at this, but I'll try because I love the show. I thought it would be fun. And I got through to like the final two and then it was just like, yeah, you're too short. <laughs> Damn it. You were robbed. I was, I you was. You were robbed. I know. That's all right. Hey, let's, speaking of theater, let's do this. Yes. Bet on me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> bet on it, bet on it, bet on it, bet on me. <laughs> um, okay, so when we last we left off, uh, we were going through these various characters. I learned, so I was looking around, I was playing around here, and uh, it tracks how many different endings you've gotten for each of the different characters. We gotta try to reach the true endings which is good to know. And then also I was clicking around and we have the decision trees that lead us to the various uh, endings. It's interesting that we got this ending without actually going through these other decisions. So that's pretty fascinating. Um, but yeah, so that if we start getting stumped, we can start to figure out kind of using these clues what we haven't done yet. That being said, there's obviously still plenty of stuff that we have at our disposal to explore here. So last time we were trying to play nice, get everyone to, to get along, and our maiden kept dying in a fire, which, you know, that, that's kind of a bummer. That's, that's, that's a, it's a blow for sure. Um, so I'm curious this time to see if the maiden and the overlord are friends if she's a tyrant, right? I feel like that's an interesting place to start. Yeah, right? I like that. Um, it seems like some of these decisions with the hero also will probably pivot a lot of things, like if he starts slaughtering things at the beginning versus at the end. Um, but I think if the maiden is polite to the underling, she won't call for help, which will then allow them to talk. But then the maiden is brought to the overlord, and the overlord's like, I'm a tyrant, and I'm going to teach you how to be strong, maiden. Maybe that'll do something. So let's see how this goes. So I'm going to go through the maiden storyline one more time and meet up with our tyrant overlord and see how that goes. Okay, you're the maiden. Live in the peaceful village. Everyone says, hey, you're going to get kidnapped by some demons at some point. And you're like, ooh, that sounds kind of spicy. I could definitely do that. I aspire to greater things in my life. You meet a demon and you introduce yourself. And hey, maybe you can take me to your demon castle and teach me some things. And the demon's like, la la la, I don't care, but I'll take you anyway. 
Uh, okay, after it, so this is where things should change. After a long walk, you're introduced to the Overlord. She lectures the underling that brought you here, who was apparently told not to leave their post. You wonder what cruel punishment awaits them. But to your surprise, she lets him off easy. The underling is dismissed, and the Overlord turns to you, looking very interested. You explain why you've come, and she squints at you. It turns out she never had any plans to capture maidens or to do anything else that would agitate the humans. You wonder for a moment if she might be lying, but it doesn't really seem like it. You've always been told that demons would one day seek you out, uh, that hero would come to your rescue, you don't want to believe that you were lied to. He asked the overlord uh, what you should do to be a more suitable maiden. She doesn't seem to understand. Just go home and stop worrying about destiny so much. She makes it sound simple, the overlord seems to the complete opposite. You want to learn more from her, shares many stories. My, okay, as it turns out, she commanded her demons to avoid towns and villages. Okay, wait, this is... we didn't change anything. N and nothing changed! She says you can thank her by raising hero. Stop raising heroes. She's tired of servants getting killed off. You always think that demon, demons were unreasonable, but she seems pretty cool. Okay, really, they're just trying to live their lives. Maybe I, everything I said was to deceive you. Maybe I was actually evil all along. Even if she were to capture you now, you think this place is far more interesting. Okay, you feel free. Okay, we're starting to fall in love. The hero comes. He's like, gorge. I thought you were kidnapped, and the maiden's like, why doesn't anyone read my damn note? I left you guys a note. You apologize for causing trouble. D didn't anyone read the note? Hey, come join me. The overlord allows the two of you to leave. You'll be back soon, but sooner than you think, because the castle's on fire, you rush back in. Oh no, the door is on fire, and it's really hot, and I'm a weak maiden, and so I'm gonna die in the fire. Okay, okay. So that didn't change anything. Good to know. Reset the stage. Um, let's see. I think what we should do is let's check out let's check out some more hero stuff. I think let's make him dutiful, heroic, but also diplomatic. Let's have the maiden be polite. Let's, let's, and let's have the demons be nice. So if everyone's nice, but he's also very aggressive and like, I'm our hero, I'm gonna do all of this stuff. Cause up till now we've done a lot of like, the hero is a coward and so he runs away. Let's have the hero actually do brave stuff and we'll be him. Okay. You are the hero. You like to think of yourself as a pretty reliable and swell guy. Your life's been ordinary outside of the occasional heroic adventure fighting evil monsters. You're told that a maiden from your village has been kidnapped and is likely being held capped. See, the problem here isn't with any of our four characters. The problem here is society. We live in a society. These characters live in a society that perpetuates this. Perpetuates. These, these stereotypes. The stereotypes. And, and not just the stereotypes, just the sheer fact of not reading notes. Because look, yeah. the hero is told that the maiden has been kidnapped, despite the fact that she left a note. So really, who's to blame here? Not the hero, not the overlord, not the maiden. All of them were doing the right decisions. It's literally society. <laughs> You're told a uh, maiden from your village has been kidnapped and it's likely being held captive. Yes. Who even puts a village next to the, yep, if you have demon. You are happy to protect the townspeople though. You are born to play this role. You head off on your adventures to rescue the maiden, but demon soldiers block your path. You could kill them to gain experience. Uh, we don't want to flee. We're going to bravely slaughter the evil creatures. Let's be dutiful. You make quick work of the vile creatures who stood in your way. You feel much stronger now. After a long trek, you make it to the castle's front gates. You're faced with an army of demons that all look very intimidating. There's no way to sneak past these monsters if you want to reach the overlord. Okay. Cut through. Ask if they'll let you in. So I'm dutiful. But I'm going to ask. You attempt to explain why you've come, but the monster b before you is eyeing you with suspicion. They can't help but notice the demon blood from earlier. You, you haven't had the chance to wash off yet. Whoops. You have no choice but to fight the army in self-defense. Oh well, more experience points for you. You make your way through the castle, fending off the demons that stand in your way. You make it to the overlord's chamber and hope that you're still in time to save the maiden. You find the maiden being held captive by the overlord just as you suspected. But for some reason, you can't sense anything sinister happening. You all look at each other in surprise and confusion. This is no time to hesitate! Here, 
Let's let's end it. Let's get this ending because we haven't done this. Destroy the Overlord. You lunge forward, driving your blade through the evil Overlord. She screams and falls silent. The Overlord has been slain. You smile, offering your maid, the maiden your hand. She takes it. After a slight hesitation, she must be surprised at how strong you are. You escort the maiden home. She's oddly quiet on the trek back to the village. She must be too shy to speak. The villagers are very pleased with what a good job you've done. Slaying the overlord and saving a hostage, they throw a huge celebration in your name. You are remembered for generations as the greatest hero the village has ever seen. Mm. So that was a good ending for the hero. Bad ending for literally everyone else, but hey. All right. And we can't be diplomatic if we're dutiful and heroic. That eliminates that option. Uh, let's do that one one more time, but this time let's ask the maiden what's going on. I'm curious if that'll... So same thing again. Bada bada bing, bada boom. We're gonna try to be diplomatic, it's not gonna work. We get more experience anyway. Nothing sinister is happening. Let, ask the maiden what's going on. She explains that she came here of her own, on her own and was never in any danger. She hesitantly asks why you're covered in blood. You don't know how to respond. The overlord moves past you and out the door to see her army in lifeless, bloody piles. She's wailing. It's horrible. This is your chance, hero! This is all just a big... Stab the overlord while you can! No, that'll just end up with her dying again, so this is all a big misunderstanding. You hope she'll just let this whole thing slide if you could just explain yourself. You really try, but the overlord is inconsolable. She tears you apart, and the maiden watches in silence. As you die, you can't help but think you probably deserve this. Tragic hero! Huh. Alright, so. And that was her being nice. And polite, okay. So now. So dutiful seems to be the, the thing that kind of sends us down this pathway of wrecking everything. So, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do that one one more time. This time I'm gonna kill the maiden, uh, the overlord right at the very end and wonder if it's gonna get us the same thing. I'm thinking it will. Ask if they'll let us in. Okay, ask the maiden what's going on. She's like, you idiot, I came here on my own. Well, this is my chance, slaughter. You lunge forward driving your blade. Yeah, she screams and falls silent. The overlord's been slain. Yeah, I figured this would be the same thing, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so it seems like dutiful is the thing that's killing us off here. I think we're heroic which keeps us brave, but also diplomatic. I think that's the big decision here. Because it's his willingness to rush into battle and just slaughter things, that's the problem. You're a, a swell guy. You're happy to protect a maiden. Here's some demons. We, see, but if we don't slay them. So no matter what, here, let's flee like a coward. Forgetting your pride, you escape with your life, but you can't return home now, your reputation will be ruined. You wonder how you'll ever be able to rescue that maiden all, all on your own if you can't even fight some lousy demon underlings. You'll take your chances at the castle. You're a hero after all, this is your job. After a long trek, you make it to the castle's front gates. You're faced with an army of demons that all look very intimidating. There's no way to sneak past them, so now ask if they'll let us in. You go up and explain why you're here. They stare you down, but they trust you and escort you to the overlord's chamber. Overlord and Maiden seem to be in the middle of some casual conversation when you barge in. They all look at each other in surprising confusion. There's no time to hesitate! Actually, there is. Let's talk to the Maiden. Maiden explains that she was never actually captured and that she came here of her own volition. That was a pretty dangerous thing to do, but no one got hurt, so at least there's that. You ask her to return with you to reassure everyone of her safety. Okay, the Overlord allows you two to leave. You casually exit the castle. Make conversation with the Maiden, but she's quiet. She wants to go back. Castle's burning, can't help but feel relieved. Smoke is dense. Okay, this is what we got last time. No going in would be suicide. We, she dies. Bystander hero, okay. So this fire, what is causing the fire? It's gotta be the underling, right? You're the overlord, it's a cushy life, it's pretty amazing. There's even a role called the hero who's coming here to destroy me. What's the deal? You actively avoided pissing off humans and they still hate you, it kinda sucks. Politics are garbage. Maybe if they would just talk to us, that'd be great. You think you're pretty cool and mature to hold yourself to a higher standard. One of your underlings walks into your room. They're saying something about how boring it is to stand in one place and guard the castle all the time. You see the point, but their way of whining about it kinda bothers you. What do you do? You grant them the day off. 
Tell them to take a break from the stifling castle atmosphere and refresh their dark soul. The day off should be fine. They thank you. You have nothing better to do today, so you take a nap. Being the overlord is the best. You awake to knock on your door. The underling from earlier has brought you some company. It's a maiden from the nearby human village. She says her role is to be captured by you. The maiden then goes to say that she's been getting very impatient thinking about her impending capture, so she is here to speed things along. You appreciate the honesty, but regret to inform her that you never had any plans to capture the humans. She seems very disappointed by this. Aw oh, man, why can't I be captured by stronger things than me, Ash? Perhaps I'm not performing my role well enough. How can I be more maiden-like? <laughs> you don't really understand the question. You think this world puts way too much focus on destiny and junk. Just go home, stop worrying about it, you tell her. The maiden seems to be having a hard time wrapping her head around this. She insists that she stay and talk to you more. You feel warm inside as she looks into your eyes. This is the first time a human has looked at you without contempt. You wonder what to say. Here we go. This is it. Uh, tell her she better go home. So this is what... Well, antisocial... Because when she stays, if we let her stay, because this is what every decision has happened thus far, right? We let her stay implicitly in all the other storylines, and she sticks around, the hero comes, takes her away. So if we send her away now, it actually protects the maiden, I think. But here, we're going to let her stay for a while. You can't bring yourself to send the maiden quite away just yet. She got here. You enjoy a nice long chat, sharing stories about your kind. She expresses her surprise that demons are not at all what she expected them to be. You're glad that she seems to have an open mind about these sorts of things. You also bring up how you always instruct your army to avoid humans, as not to agitate them and get heroes sent out after us. That explains why people in my village have been left unharmed. It's because of your orders, isn't it? We're very grateful. You're surprised to hear her thank you. You've always thought that humans were violent and unreasonable. Yeah, not that far off. That's why your servants are always getting killed despite your efforts to leave them alone. But this maiden, she's different. You joke that maybe you've been lying to her the whole time, that you were actually super evil all along. The maiden laughs at that, saying she wouldn't mind being held captive here. The people in her village are a little exhausting at times. You can't tell if she's into you or not. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I, I can. I, I would say it's very strong. She's into you vibes. You're interrupted by another human in your door. You're interrupted by, by the, the window start bar. menu. Yeah, by the window start by the task bar suddenly barging into your story. <laughs> You're interrupted by another human in your doorway. This time it's a hero. She, he was apparently searching for the maiden who was rumored to have been captured. Captured? Not at all. I only wanted to meet with the Overlord. Didn't anyone read the note that I left behind? After everything's explained, the hero expresses his relief that this whole misunderstanding hadn't led to any horrible consequences. The maiden apologized for causing trouble, and the hero asks her to return to the village. Confusing feelings well up inside your heart. You're surprised that you had one of those to begin with. You don't want the hero to take this maiden away from you. Keep her. Because if I send her away, she's going to burn with me. Keep her. The maiden came here to be captured by you, didn't she? You'll grant her wish! You tell the hero that you won't let him take her home. The maiden assures you she'll be back, but you don't budge. The hero is cautious now. If you won't let her go, maybe you demons are evil after all. And if you are, I'll be forced to vanquish you. Oh, <gasps> You have no choice. You destroy the hero before he can steal your maiden away. She's frightened. You don't understand why. Didn't she say she prefers this place to her village? Now she doesn't have to leave. You take a step towards the maiden and she backs herself into a corner. You don't understand. She wanted to stay here with you. The hero was trying to get in the way of that. You had to kill him. You'll be sure to keep this maiden very safe from now on. Oh <gasps> no, selfish overlord. Aww. I know. Ash. I know. Oh, that's so sad. But if I send her here, let's see, if, if I send her away, I'm curious. Okay, day off. Uh, let her stay. Okay. I'm going to let them go, and maybe this will show us what starts the fire. You're certain that she'll return to spend more time with you, you just have to trust in that, you decide. With the hero and the maiden gone, you plop down into the comfort of your luxurious overlord bed. Your room feels so empty now. Is this loneliness? You hope your new friend will be back soon. You close your eyes for a while until your door slams shut. Before you know it, everything around you is being engulfed by flames. What's going on? You try to escape, but something's blocking the door. You're having trouble forcing it open. What is this? Someone didn't want you getting out. 
Are you being usurped? They have zero foresight. What castle will they rule if this one burns? You don't want to believe that your underlings have betrayed you, but this is no accident. Those ungrateful bastards. You choke on the thick black smoke from the fire. You can't believe you're being done in by a bunch of cowards. You'll see them in heck. Burned Overlord. Huh, so it is... Okay, so that gives us a sense of what's going on there. So, Tyrant... So we gotta figure out a way to stop this guy, and it seems like it's tied to this guy, right? These three seem to be in a good place. It's this guy. It's, man, it's always the employees that are the problem. The Ash? Work, the work associates. The work associates are always the problem. <laughs> Why are you guys always the problem, Ash? <sighs> what do you have against just following the Overlord and believing in what they have to say? Are you the Overlord in this situation? I guess, I don't know. I, it's, it's a thinly veiled simile. I don't know. It's tough. It's a tough one. It's a, it, it's a tough one. No, actually, you're, you're a great underling. Thank you. my overlording. Thank you, yeah. Overlord. Yeah. Very cool. No problem, underling. Uh, are you hungry? <laughs> are you disloyal? See, he's not hungry or disloyal. But apparently him not get involved in the plot to kill the Overlord. Maybe if the underling... Maybe if the underling sucks. <laughs> And he, you know, if he's disloyal and gets involved in the plot to kill the Overlord, maybe that stops the plot. Maybe he's so bad at his job. He's like, ah, here, let's, okay. She's gonna let him go. She's gonna not be antisocial. So she's gonna let the maiden learn from her. And she's gonna be possessive, not possessive. She's gonna be polite, not scream for help. He's gonna be di diplomatic. Heroics tries to kill the Overlord, slaughters all the demons, yeah. So he shouldn't try to kill anyone. Here. All right, underling. This is, you are the missing piece here. You're the demon underling in service of the overlord. You aren't particularly strong, not weak either. That's why your friends, that's what your friends tell you. So we're guarding the castle, it's super boring. We go up to our tyrant overlord and we're like, man, work sucks, I could use a, a personal day. And she's like, well, it's not gonna come out of, you know, it'll come out of your like paid vacation days, but if you're okay using it, and he's like, yeah, I have no foresight, I don't plan on taking a long multi-week vacation, that's fine, woo, paid time off. And he goes out of the castle, he does some somersaults, it's very exciting, he meets a maiden. She greets you and says she has a favor to ask. Uh, we do not gobble her up, we hear her out. And we listen, she's rambling a bit, we get bored because we have the attention span of a fruit fly. So he has nothing better to do because it's his day off, so he takes him to the Overlord. Okay, we all know this. Uh, it's about time for a nap. Okay, they seem to be getting along fine, so he decides it's time for a nap. Okay, you don't get to sleep long, though, because your friends wake you up. Rude. Hashtag rude. One of them is stepping on you pretty hard. You ask them what the deal is. They say they're planning a whole revolution. They're going to get rid of the current Overlord and put a new ruler in place. They want to hear if you're in or out. And being a pretty lazy underling, of course, you reply with, it sounds like a lot of trouble. How about we just skip it instead? Your friends question your loyalty to their cause. Well, this will get us an ending, so let's get this ending real quick. She's not so bad, you guys. Your friends seem pretty disappointed. They apologize to you, but before you can ask what they're sorry about, one of them suddenly seizes you. Someone who's still loyal to the Overlord really has no place in our castle. You understand, right? The claws tighten around your neck. You don't bother to struggle. You're outnumbered. You already know how things like this end. <laughs> Man, what a wet noodle. This is a pretty messed up thing to do to a friend, you tell him. Work associates! Work, Ash. Work associates. Work, they slit your throat in response. Faithful underling. Man, work associates. That's like Amy. Be careful. <laughs> if Amy ever approaches you trying to overthrow me as ruler of the channels, careful. I give you permission to agree with Amy. So that way you don't get your throat slit. Really, Matt? Yeah, I don't want you to get your throat slit. My my overlording of these channels is not worth your life. Well, thank you, Matt. But it's also not worth you losing your life yeah, in, in fire. Well, I'll, well, I'll leave the house already. Just give me a heads up. Okay. Okay. Just so me I'll, I'll quietly just, let you know. Yeah, just on the DL, if you could be like, hey, Amy's trying to do a coup d'etat, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Or like, hey, Jason is a bit disgruntled right now, <laughs> and he's asking me some weird questions. You might want to take a vacation day or something. Okay. Okay. Cool. You could do that. Yeah, for That sure. way I can make sure that insurance policies are all in place, and, you know, and I'm, out, you know, me and my three-year-old and staff are out of, 
out of the line of fire. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if, if you, you can want, get Skip too, that'd be great. Yeah, oh yeah, Skip absolutely. But yeah, if, if if there's ever if they want it, you know, it's theirs. <laughs> go, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. So we're close with the underling. We know we know the general path to overthrowing now. So we're gonna hear her out. They want to overthrow the government, uh, and we say, okay, let's kill this overlord. You tell them that you were joking and clarify that you're totally in to win it. You're in it to win it. They say you are always terrible with jokes. Whether or not you actually feel like killing the overlord, you know how bad it'd be to end up on the wrong side of things. And if this assassination deal doesn't pan out, you can always pretend that you were innocent all along. But beneath your shield of faux confidence, you worry about what you're getting yourself dragged into. You follow your friends outside the castle to talk more about the plan. You're curious if they have any idea how they want to go about this. They figured they'd just lock her in a room and set it on fire. What a stupid plan. That could go wrong in so many ways. You realize your friends are just a bunch of directionless thugs. Useless without someone else's guidance. Your guidance. Yes. They'd probably be casualties if he fought her head on. And while showing, and while showing deaths make a revolution a heck of a lot more fun, it's probably the wrong way to go. Your friends agree and suggest that you play the assassin. You really don't want it to come down to this. Okay, your friends agree. They suggest that you play, so I have to assassinate the overlord now. You, you really didn't want it to come down to this, but you can't back down now. They'll have to be the one to assass, you'll have to be the one to assassinate the overlord. Besides, no one has any better ideas. Okay, here we go. You and your friends turn, this is cool. You're seeing all the colors mixed together at this point, right? So you have the purple, um, the maiden, the pink of the overlord, and the blue of the underling. The only one we're missing is the hero, actually. You and your friends turn to notice a pair of humans have overheard your entire conversation. Ah, oh, the hero and the maiden, they take off into the castle. They're headed to the overlord's room. Oh, geez, fudge. The overlord will kill you for sure if she found out that you were conspiring to take her out. You dash into the castle after the humans. Sure enough, the maiden's already frantically telling the overlord everything. You shout that the humans are liars! Your friends soon arrive to back you up, except they don't. Instead, they blame the whole thing on you. Work associates. Amy's gonna throw you under the bus, Ash. Amy's gonna throw you under the bus. I, I can't believe that. Yeah. How could she? I mean, when you've worked with Amy as long as I am, you can't believe it. Amy! <laughs> I love Amy. Just give her a hard time. <laughs> but really, though, you're gonna be thrown under the bus. Okay. Yeah, just get, be ready for it. Don't worry, I, as a thoughtful overlord who understands the subtle machinations of all of our employees, I understand. Okay. It's not your fault. Thank you. Okay, but now maybe now that you know that I think it's not gonna be your fault, you might make it your fault. See, now you're playing like three tiers of, of brain chess with me. Stop overthinking things, Ash! Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, no, no thoughts. No, no thoughts. Yeah, just yeah, action, just, so. just game. Yeah, just game. Uh, instead, they blame the whole thing on you. They cry that it was all your idea and that they were just going with the flow, too scared to refuse your crazy plan. You can't believe that they'd tell the Overlord such a blatant lie. You always knew better than to trust them. You're the one who didn't have a choice here. You all shout at each other until the Overlord demands silence. Regardless of who led this conspiracy, I have no choice but to punish everyone to keep you all in your place, crushed beneath my heel. She sounds tough, but lately all she does is sleep. You doubt her strength. You hear the traitorous friends mutter something about going back to plan A, and suddenly the doors, no, we're all gonna burn to death. Suddenly the door slams shut. You're trapped in here with the overlord and two humans. And then the room bursts into flames. You pound on the door screaming curses at those who betrayed you. The hero joins you, vowing to slay the lot of them. You wish he'd get that chance. The overlord grabs you by the throat. You cry for mercy. You are forced into this mess. You're sure now that they would have killed you if you'd sided with her. But the Overlord doesn't hear your pleas. She drives her claws into your chest. At least she made it quick. Traitor underling. Oh no! Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So let's think about this. If we're disloyal. So all she does is sleep. And so he's like, hey, the Overlord feels weak, right? I'm wondering if her being a tyrant might actually show some level of strength there. I don't think it's gonna change anything, but I am curious. Cause that, that comment about her always doing sleep. Oh, this sends her 
off to this other one. Let's overthrow her. Let's. No, you're sick of this overlord holding your friends uh, by the hook. Your friends aren't impressed with the overthrow plan. You sneak out. Okay, we meet the maiden, we hear her out. We take her back to the castle. Everything, they apologize, you're all cool. So now the overlord earlier in the story knows about the, the overthrowing plan, which is interesting. Feels like a time for a nap. You don't sleep long, your friends wake you up. Okay, how about we skip it? Okay, so now we're gonna try to overthrow her again. But this time she knows about it in advance. Okay, they're gonna follow, they're gonna lock her in the room, we can't back down, oh no. She hears about the plan. They blame the whole thing on you. You cry that it wasn't your idea. You can't believe that they tell the overlord such a lie, except it wasn't, because we started off saying we should overthrow the overlord. They'll shout at each other, overlord, okay. Regardless if we led the conspiracy, you gotta be crushed underneath my heel. She sounds tough. Okay, so that didn't change anything. Lately, all she does is sleep. Okay, so that didn't change anything, and everyone bursts into flames, and we kill her. Okay, yep, that's fine. So that's the same thing. So it didn't really change all that much. So now, let's keep him as disloyal. Yeah, he's disloyal. Uh, at this point, it's back to the maiden, I think. Because let's think about this. So it's the maiden is the one who tells the overlord about the plot, right? So presumably if we tell the overlord in a different way, that'll change things. Okay, so we're gonna introduce ourselves. At which point we all bond together. Oh, oh shoot, sorry. We're already at different stuff, okay. Okay, the Overlord lets us leave. Great, we leave with the hero. We'll be back soon. Near the castle's entrance, you spy a group of suspicious demons congregating. They're talking about assassinating the Overlord. You have to warn her. So now we have Overlord and hero mixed together, which is interesting. But the hero shakes his head. He says that if this is the true nature of demons, the world is better off with less of them. Uh, this isn't right, you think. What kind of hero passes up the chance to save a life? The demons have taken notice of you. It's now or never. You take off into the castle and the unreliable hero follows shortly after. You burst in the overlord's room, all your words spilling out at once. You probably should slow down, but there's no time. The overlord seems to have followed your frantic explanation, but clearly doesn't understand the urgency of the situation. The underling you recognize from before barges in calling you a liar. You're surprised that they were a part of this evil plot. They seemed so nice. The other demons come in right after them, saying the whole thing was the first underling's idea. Everyone's shouting at each other now. It's really stressing you out. This is stressful, guys. Can we just, like, not try to kill each other and burn each other to death? You're relieved when the Overlord demands silence. She threatens them with violence, and you think she's a... She is very Overlord-like in this moment. <laughs> yes. The group of demons hiss to each other before shutting the door, leaving the little one behind. You watch as it pounds on the door in distress. They've locked you all in. You have a bad feeling about this. And thinking that must have jinxed it, because now the room is engulfed in flames. If only, you had, if only you had ignored those demons before, you and the hero wouldn't have stumbled into the situation. If you had just pretended not to hear them, if you left as you were told, only the overlord would have been killed. But you couldn't have done that. That path isn't an option for you because you are but a fair maiden with no, no abilities in your life. You think that no matter what, you'll always strive for the path where everyone survives. It must exist. It simply must. The Overlord seizes her underling. They beg for their life. You pray. You don't know what else to do, so you just pray. The Overlord's claws pierce the underling's chest. They scream an awful scream. She digs and twists her claws into the poor thing while she, you continue to pray. But there's no saving any of you now. You, the Overlord, the hero, and the underling's corpse are consumed by flames. Oh, the devout maiden. All right. Delightful. So... On one hand, it seems like this decision is partly decided by the hero and his reaction to hearing the, the assassination plot and him saying, it doesn't matter. And 
the other decision seems to be tied to the overlord and whether or not the overlord decides to kill the underling. Those are, I feel like, the two decisions that are at play right now. So I think we hop back to our good friend, the hero. Honestly, to be, to be honest, the hero is totally right to he's killing off all the co-workers. He's just doing it too early. That's the problem. He needs to be able to kill off the co-workers later. That's, that's what it is. Sometimes you just need to bump off a few people later on in the storyline. It's basically the plot of Moon Knight. You know. Because, did you watch Moon Knight? I've watched part of it. Okay, because Moon Knight is all about the battle between these two Egyptian gods. One of which is like... I want to punish all the people who I know are going to do bad things in the future, so let's just stop them before they do bad things. And the other Egyptian god's like, no, let's let them do the bad things, and then we can punish them. Which is an interesting dichotomy. I it think it, I think it's pretty fascinating. I've been trying to do a film theory about it, but I have to sit down and think through all the logistical consequences of it. But it's like Minority Report, right? Is it better to... Like, if you know the person is going to do bad things, is it better to stop them, or do you want them to, to prevent suffering for other people down the line? Or maybe there's a chance that they can uh, thwart their destiny and not do bad things, which is kind of the other argument. Every day I wake up, then I start to break up. <laughs> wow. I like, I like that song. I'm glad that they included a song from my guy. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Excellent. Well, what do you think? Are you, are you about to do... Well, you've already done crime. Mm -hmm. So you're, the scales on your arm, I don't know. I think Amit might, might take your soul. Yeah. Like, oh no, Ash touched the Titanic. Crime. Crime. Ash took a baby bottle pop when she was seven and then felt so bad in the parking lot that she ran back into the Target to give it back. Good, Good job giving it back. Crime. Yeah. I wonder what level of crime... That, and that's and again like that's actually the big thing for this film theory that I'm trying to figure out is what level of crime it takes for you to be prejudged as like nope you're beyond saving yeah like if Amit the crocodile god's like you know what you, you, baby bottle pop nah we'll let that one slide but if it had been like candy necklace oh see that's where the like what is the financial what is the what is the financial line between Hey, I, Egyptian god, I'm gonna steal your soul and judge you as guilty versus, you know what? You're okay. Yeah. Like, is it, is it candy necklace? Is there, is there an age limit to this thing, right? Like you said, if you're seven and stealing a baby bottle pop, you but know. But also, I was in the parking lot, realized what I'd done, and ran in to give it back. Sure. But if you're, but what if you were 13 and you stole that baby bottle pop? What, it does the guilt factor in that's a question right i again this is all questions that is that is what bad end theater would like us to think about exactly moon knight exactly i, I think we're interpreting this game like a champ we are I think, I think we're pros at this all right let's run in as the hero and help the maid not freak out with the overlord i think that's the goal here uh we're a reliable and swell guy so we need to get into the castle without getting blood on our clothes that is basically the takeaway here so we run away, we do not get blood on our clothes, so we're still good. We ask to be let in. They let us in, we see the maiden. We're like, hey yo, what's going on, maiden? And maiden's like, hey, read my damn note. I'm all good, okay. So I'm fine, let's go back to the village. Okay, we pause when we see a group of suspicious demons standing near the entrance. They're talking about assassinating the overlord. This proves to you that demons really are foul creatures. We have to tell her about this. You don't understand what the maiden's thinking. The world is better off with less demons. They're all cold, ruthless creatures that should be destroyed. And those same creatures have just noticed you eavesdropping. The maiden takes off into the castle and you have no choice but to follow. You burst into the overlord's room. The maiden frantically tries to communicate what you just overheard. A demon underling barges in next, calling you liars. It's followed by the group from the entrance who shifts the blame back onto the little one. These demons only care about themselves. How low can they be? You begin shouting at them and the whole room dissolves into noise until the overlord yells for everyone to just shut their traps. She threatens them with violence. This overlord is no better than her subjects. You grip your sword tightly. If you have to cut through everyone here to get this maiden to safety, you certainly will. The group of demons hiss to each other before shutting the door, leaving the runt of the litter behind. You glance around for another exit, but there isn't one. You have a terrible feeling about this. In an instant, the whole room is in flames. What kind of demonic magic is this? 
The underling pounds on the door, upset that he's been betrayed. You join it, vowing to slay the cowardly demons on the other side. The next moment, the overlord has taken hold of the underling. It's crying for mercy. She thrusts her claws into the underling's chest, and it lets out a horrible scream. You back away. You won't be the target of her rage. She continues to dig and twist her claws into its limp body. You can no longer watch. You look at the maiden. She's crying, hands clasped together in prayer. To have faith in a time like this, you envy her. Two of you, the overlord and the underling's corpse, are all consumed by the flames. Hmm. Resigned hero. Okay. All right. So it seems like this is the way to go. It, it seems like the Overlord and their decision to shout at everyone seems to be the deciding factor. Because there I expected the hero to be like, oh, you know, we let's calm down about this maiden, but that didn't do anything. So I think it must be here. Overlord's the last one that we kind of have available to us. Uh, we're gonna grant them the day off, but it's gonna be disloyal anyway. That doesn't really seem to change too much. Uh, let's let her stay. I do want to be anti-social to her at some point, because I'm curious what's going to happen. We let them all go. Okay. Here we go. So, we go, we go to sleep. You've almost fallen asleep when the maiden and the hero burst into the room, frantically trying to communicate something to you. You're told that a group of demons is plotting to assassinate you. You're not surprised. How nice of the humans to care, though. One of your underlings barges in next, shouting that the humans are liars. You're followed by another, they're followed by another group of demons crying that everything was the first underling's plan. Everyone is shouting over each other now and it's very annoying and you yell for all of them to shut their traps. You have no doubt that your servants would let their ambition cloud their judgment and lead them to try and take your throne. Regardless of who led this conspiracy, I have no choice but to punish everyone to keep you all in the place, crushed beneath my heel. Make, saying that makes you feel very overlord-like. You aren't sure if you have the strength to back it up though. Lately all you do is sleep. I love all the references to them just sleeping. Uh, the group of demons start muttering something about going back to plan A. Door shuts. You and everyone's trapped inside. The whole room's in flames. Okay. Hero pounds on the door, vowing to slay the cowardly demons. So this is how you'll die. Burned alive in your own room by those you thought you could trust. You should have expected this from a bunch of idiot demons. You notice the maiden crying. Why does she have to die over something that has nothing to do with her? Perhaps she was cursed from the moment she spoke to you. You wonder if you're cursed as well. You're so filled with anger and frustration, you don't even notice that you've grabbed the underling who those traitors blamed everything on. They cry for mercy, saying that they were dragged into this plot, knowing that they'd be killed if they took your side. They cry that they didn't want to have to kill you. You almost feel sorry for them. Ooh, merciful. Forgive them. You release the underling. Killing them wouldn't make you feel any better. Besides, they've already gotten their punishment. You'll all burn together. Overlord's, hey, Overlord's true end. Before you're taken back to reset the story once again, you pause for a moment. True, <laughs> Oh, well done game. You understand the player. True end, you say to yourself. What was the point of all my effort if the true ending is this terrible? You must have forgotten where you were. This is Bad End Theater! Is the pain setting in? Oh, but you should have been well aware of what you, you'd you be shown when you entered this place. It's a problem I've seen quite often. At some point, you grew attached to my little cast. You started to relate to their flaws, their plights. You started wishing for their happiness, but you aren't gonna find that here in my theater, my lovingly crafted labyrinth of suffering. Anyway, I hope you'll pardon the interruption. You're making great progress. The choice to continue on to the next ending is always yours. I'll leave you to it, dear guest. Hmm. That's funny. That's funny. So we've gotten four of 10, underling five of nine, four of 11, and let's see. So the true end, locked in a room. Oh, this is true. Oh, okay. True end is this one. Okay. See, but this one, if the if he is not disloyal, it changes it up a little bit. That's interesting. Let's try that. Let's turn him not disloyal, and then we'll see what that does. So we're here. We're the overlord. Take the day off. Good times. Great oldies. Stay for a while. 
Okay. Woo! I'll let him go. Door slams shut. Before you know it, everything around you is being engulfed in flames. You try to escape, but something's blocking the door and you're having trouble opening it. What is this? Some didn't want you getting out. Are you being usurped? They have zero foresight. In the castle, will they rule if it burns down? You choke on the thick black smoke. They're cowards. You'll see them in a heck. Huh. So I guess that's not how this technically works, because... The overlord lets the maiden hero go. He's disloyal. That's the ending if you kill the underling. What? Which one? Um, the one that branches off from being disloyal, because you had that last choice at the end. You but, chose... Oh, but you're saying, like... That's another under overlord ending. Okay. Mmm, alright. Interesting. Here, real quick, since we're here, let's do... I want to do the... the I, I've been waiting to do this one, so we might as well pick it up. Let's do... Boop. Then let's do... We're gonna send the maiden away this time. We're gonna be antisocial. Tell her she'd better go home. You'd love to have all the conversations in the world with your new friend, but having a human girl here will definitely cause trouble. You put on your mean face and tell her to get lost. But the maiden turns out to be very stubborn. You don't want to hurt her, but you also really want her to leave in case something bad happens. This whole situation is just asking for trouble, you think. Against your better judgment, you let her hang out for a while longer. Ha. Huh. You enjoy a nice long chat. You also bring up how you instruct your army. Huh. So even... You can't tell if she's into you, hero comes... And then all the rest of this seems to be the same. She's gone, she comes running back. I'm gonna be trapped in. Ah, anger, we're burning. Okay. There we go, take retribution, this is the ending. You pierce their chest with your claws, they scream. The hero backs away. He is wise not to interfere. They've stopped moving, but you keep digging and twisting your claws into them. It doesn't make you feel any better. The underling's corpse burns along with you and the two humans. There it is. Okay. Spiteful overlord ending. Okay. So. Yeah, and that's the bad end there. Yep. Okay. So being antisocial didn't actually change anything, which was interesting. Um... Who, who is gonna, is someone gonna stop the fire? Here, now that we've unlocked Merciful, let's let her be Merciful. We don't want her to be any of these other things. He, disloyal. If, if she's Merciful, I'm just trying to think, who is gonna be most impacted by this? He stays alive. So I think it tosses back to him. But they're all dying anyway. <laughs> they're all dead anyway. Okay, hey, we find a maiden. Let's hear her out. Okay. Uh, let's kill the overlord. Woo! Uh-oh, a maiden and a hero hear about our plan. They're running inside. Oh no, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. Instead of all yelling. Okay, you pound on the door. Overlord grabs you by the throat. You ask for mercy. You are forced into this mess. You're sure now that they would have killed you if you'd sided with her. To your surprise, the Overlord spares you. Or maybe she'd rather see you suffer. Looking around, you've just gone from one dead end to another. The Maiden is crying. The hero is silent. You all burn together. Yeah, I figured that wouldn't change too much. Underlings... Ah, oh, that's the Underlings' true end. No matter the perspective, the true ending remains the same. That's what makes it true. You couldn't resist seeing it for yourself, though, could you? I wonder what will happen if you collect them all. Yes. Will you give in to despair, or will you reset the stage? Yes, I will reset the stage. Uh, okay. I feel like the prayers are gonna... If... I've played Earthbound, I understand that in some games, prayer is the thing that ultimately lets you beat the final boss. Have you played Earthbound? Spoiler alert. Uh, I have only gotten to, like, the intro part where it's like, what's your favorite food? And then... So you you opened up the menu of the game. Yeah. And you started filling out, and you're like, no, peace out. I'm well, done. it was like... <laughs> this is too many questions. It was, I gotta type stuff. I gotta make decisions. Nope. Hard I, pass. It was the first Earthbound, so I don't think it's the one with Ness in it. 
It's the oh, you're in Mother, Mother Zero or whatever. I think or so. Or Found Beginnings, I guess. What Earthbound they call them. Beginnings, yeah. yes. And I've done a little bit of that. Okay. I didn't realize the importance of the favorite food. <laughs> um. So I was like, you know what? I've been on a brie kick lately. So you were, <laughs> so you were, you like answered some like memeish thing. No, I I answered brie. Oh, brie. Great. And now my whenever I go home, my mom's like serves you brie. I can make you some brie. <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna like make I'm me so some stuffed up from all the cheese, mom. <laughs> Give me a break, mom. That's a lot of cheese. I'm just I'm impressed that she can make brie whenever I go home. <laughs> She's able to just magically produce <laughs> this, um, this wonderful <laughs> soft cheese. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I can just magically produce brie. It's fine. That's hilarious. Yeah, and that's what that's what killed your gameplay experience, huh? Was well, her constantly serving you brie. <laughs> no, I just haven't gotten back to it Fair yet. Enough. Yeah, yeah, here, spoil. Uh, let me tell you. Just just skip straight to Earthbound. Oh really? They're, they are basically the exact same game, except Earthbound is worlds better, both okay. from a gameplay standpoint and from a story standpoint. So, at this point, uh, everyone was scared when the tyrant was killing off the underling. So I think let's be hero, and then I think we wrap up with Maiden. And if we have to do this into a third part, we might have to. We'll see. But I don't... It feels... Is there a way to save them? I feel like the game is actively telling us, like, there's no way to save them. But that could also just be the classic, like, ha-ha! We've thwarted the game! Okay, we ask if we were let in. Ask the main what's going on. We communicate. It's great. Oh no! Demons have a plot! Let's go warn the overlord! Uh-oh, we're trapped in this burning room. What demonic magic is this? Thunderling pounds on the door. You join it, vowing to slay the cowardly demons on the other side. The next moment, the Overlord has taken hold of the Underling. It's crying for mercy. She's going to, is she going to kill it as retribution? It continues to cry and make excuses, but the Overlord does nothing. To your surprise, she lets it go. Are demons capable of mercy? I guess it doesn't matter now. You all burn together. True end, I'm assuming. Hero's true end. And then finally, Maiden. Okay, you're the Maiden. Here we go, we're wishing for an exciting life. We introduce ourselves. Yay! This is so exciting, wonderful. Okay. Oh no, there's an evil plot. I'm a maiden, I don't really have many choices in my own story. <laughs> the underling you recognize, uh, calling you a liar, okay. Oh no, everyone's shouting at each other, we're all mad. She's very overlord-like, wow, hashtag girl boss. <laughs> Man, what a girl boss. That's kind of chuggy though, it's fine. Uh, have they locked you all in? You have a bad feeling about this. Oh no, it's burning! Room's engulfed in flames. If only you had ignored those demons before. You and the hero wouldn't have stumbled into the situation. If you had just pretended not to hear them, if you had left as you were told. So I feel like, and this is my prediction of what's about to ha I'm, what I'm hopeful is about to happen here. Every time we do a maiden ending, you end with sentences like this, where, if only you had done this, of, like, showing that the maiden has choice in her own life. Right now, as the game presents it, the maiden has no choices, right? She can either be nice or not nice. But all of these pivotal moments are like, oh, the maiden could have changed this if she felt she, that she had uh, autonomy in her life. She could have done this if this had been possible. So I think that the game is setting us up for, you know, her prayers are answered, she unlocks the ability to choose in her own life, and now we can finally get to the good endings that we were looking for. Maybe. I don't know. F from a context standpoint, though, as someone who like plays these games, you know, and, and tries to think about where the author or where the designer is trying to take them to, that's my prediction. Uh, if you had left when you were told, only the Overlord would have been killed. But you couldn't have done that. That path isn't an option for you. You think that no matter what, you'll always strive for the path where everyone survives. It must exist. It simply must. The Overlord seizes her underling. They beg for their life. You pray. You don't know what else to do, so you just pray. The Overlord spares the underling. You feel relieved, but it doesn't make any difference. Will you all burn together? Maiden's true end. Okay, so that's all four true endings. Keep collecting bad endings? No, it can't end like this. You want to answer the Maiden's prayers. You've decided to find a way to save everyone. But we're tracing the paths that you've seen so far, there doesn't seem to be any room to avoid a bad ending. Is there really nothing you can do to keep them all from getting killed in the end? If there's nothing you can do by acting from within their story, maybe it's time to take things into your own hands. <gasps> what? On fire, on fire. You are... Question mark. I don't know, Ash. This feels like a part three. Do you have more theater trauma to talk about next time? I have 
endless theater trauma to talk about. Me too! Okay, <gasps> so between new theater, theater trauma and a new character to impact this storyline, this is going into this is going into overtime, friends. We expected to finish this today, but I also didn't expect there to be a surprise twist. A new challenger approaches. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Bad end theater. Can we upheave the system? Can we shirk destiny, spin the face of destiny, what have you, and actually save these characters? We're about to find out next time on GT Not Live. So in the meantime, friends, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya!